This is a review of some terms that we're going to be using, such as free response, forced response, transient, and steady state. Free response just means take a differential equation and set the input equal to zero. What happens if the forces acting on the system are zero? Forced response means find the response given an input of a specific type, which is not zero. Uh, the summary for these conditions are given here. Free means turn the input to zero, which is usually the right-hand side of your equation if you put it in input-output form. And uh, if there are non-zero initial conditions, they'll be told to you. As far as a force response goes, the type of input is going to be specified. And if we don't tell you, assume zero initial conditions for all of the output variables and their derivatives. And we also name these according to what kind of input we're applying. So if we say step response, that makes, means take the input variable and set it equal to our unit step function. The impulse response means set it equal to the uh, unit impulse. And then finally, the ramp function means uh, set it equal to the ramp function. Here's a brief example. We have a differential equation where u of t is used as the input, but we're not told what u of t is. So what do we do? If we're told find the free response with x of 0 equals 1, that means solve this problem where we set the right-hand side equal to 0 with initial condition x of 0 is equal to 1. Find the forced response with the unit step input. That means that we want to take, solve this equation where we are just solving for 1 of t. Now here we weren't told any initial conditions, so what should we do? We should assume x of 0 is equal to 0. Find the step response. Well, this is the same thing. We want to set u equal to 1 of t. And uh, again, because we weren't told the initial conditions, we can assume x of 0 is equal to 0. Let's also find the impulse response, where again, uh, we want to solve the equation where u of t is equal to delta of t. And uh, as a result, we want to solve x dot plus 1x is equal to delta of t. Let's also talk about transients and steady state. The response to your system usually has two parts. There's a transient that hopefully dies away over time, and there's a steady state response that continues. And this could be either constant or not. Here's an example. Is, uh, here's a system, x dot plus 2x equals 1 of t, x of 0 equals 0. We follow our usual steps and we find this response. And uh, there's one part that is constant. It's never going to go away. And then the other part, you notice, is going to uh, eventually die out with a uh, exponential shape. So the first part we'll call steady state, and the second part we'll call the transient. Here's another example is we want to find the transient and the steady state here. So what part is the steady state? Well, the, the 1 here is never going to die away, so that's going to be the steady state. And then uh, we have an exponential multiplied by a cosine. The cosine is never going to go away, but the good news is it's multiplied by an exponential, which is going to die away. And so we know that this is going to be the uh, transient part. So again, we label the steady state and the transient. Any time that you have an exponential, it's going to die uh, with a minus sign. It's going to die away, and we say that this is a this is usually a desired behavior for many of our systems. Uh, an exponential dying away is good news, and then we often say that a system is stable if you have minus signs for all of the exponentials. Here are some. Um, 
cases where the steady states can be either a constant or can be uh, uh, oscillating. Uh, if you imagine, uh, so we already saw this example where the one half is the steady state, uh, but if you have a case where you have x of t equals e to the negative one t minus cosine two t, this first part is transient, but the second part is going to oscillate steadily and uh, it's never going to go away. It's still a steady state because this behavior uh, is going to be periodic and so you know what it's going to be doing for all time. It's also possible that you have uh, systems that are unstable such as this one where the response includes e to the plus 2t. This is an unstable system because this is going to just keep growing. In these cases we don't really say that there is a steady state value uh, so even though there's one half here, uh, that one half is never going to matter because uh, the e to the plus 2t is really going to have a large effect on our system. So when we talk about stability, we usually prefer exponentials with a negative exponent. e to the negative 1t is going to head to zero, e to the positive t is going to blow up to infinity. So we say a system is stable if all of the character roots have negative real part. And here are two examples, uh, s squared plus 5s plus 6. Uh, the roots are negative 2 and negative 3, so this system is stable. We can also have s squared plus s minus 2, where uh, we have a positive and a negative part. One exponential is going to blow up, and even though the other one is well-behaved, we say this system is unstable. 